we want to say good afternoon and uh, welcome everyone again for tuning in with us tonight as we get into our services. Uh, a few announcements here tonight. Um, don't forget, uh, next Wednesday, the ladies, the WMU, will be having a uh, prayer walk uh, here at the church uh, starting at 9 this morning. Uh, they met here this morning for a prayer walk. I, uh, so if you missed this morning, uh, don't forget you can come uh, next Wednesday the 31st. So don't forget that. Um, don't forget uh, August, August, mm. April 3rd. Um, uh, we'll have a uh, Easter program here at the church for all the kids uh, starting at 2 o'clock. Um, so uh, bring... Uh, Bring your Easter baskets and a, and a towel. Uh, don't forget also returning back to services uh, in our church uh, starting uh, April 4th, which is Easter morning at 1030. So you uh, you be in prayer for that. And, uh, and looking forward to that day and looking forward to uh, returning to church and being able to see everyone and everyone be able to fellowship and and. Uh, enjoy church together uh, so you you be in prayer for that upcoming upcoming time invite someone to church to come with you that day uh, be praying for one another uh, be praying for the services that day pray for all of our services uh, you never know you never know who's watching online or who may attend a service uh, that has a great need in their life or maybe going through a, a bad time in their life uh, maybe uh, they're needing some encouragement or hope in their life. Um, uh, my prayer is, is if they're lost, uh, that they would be convicted of their sins and see the need to be saved and, and, and to be saved. That's the most important thing. So let's be in prayer for that. Don't forget, uh, as we uh, pray request this last week, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, so there's not much up there. So you bear with me as we try to remember these things. Uh, don't forget uh, Cindy Buchanan's sister. Uh, for, remember her in your prayer. Remember Arky's wife, Phyllis, in your prayers. Um, remember Faye's sister in your prayers as she's recovering. Remember, I think it was a prayer request for uh, uh, Carolyn Martin for a family member uh, with a uh, potential job. So don't forget those. And I know we have other requests and other needs in our church within uh, within everyone and families and homes, I have unspoken requests. I ask that you remember uh, those in your prayers. Uh, let's let's uh, continue to pray as we go forward into this year. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, this morning, woke up, uh, got to work, and looked at the calendar. And today, this month of March is almost over. Uh, I, and I'll be honest with you, church, this year is flying by. So. Having said that, let's be in prayer about Bible school, um, a way that we can do that safely and do it uh, efficiently to, uh, you know, just to share Jesus with these kids that come into our church, uh, just to show them uh, that the Lord loves them, that this church loves them, the community uh, loves them, and that uh, we can share with them uh, Jesus. So don't forget that. Uh, and that, that, will be, and I, that will be here shortly, so don't forget that as well. If you have your Bibles tonight and you want to turn uh, and follow along with us, we'll be in 2 Samuel chapter 22 uh, tonight. And we will only read uh, two verses uh, in your hearing tonight and preach on the thought that the Lord's laid on our heart. But I, I, I do encourage uh, everyone, if you have time uh, or you, uh, you make... Uh, uh, I know some people read the Bible daily, uh, whether, you know, being on a phone, uh, being from a Bible, um, you know, if maybe sometimes you take notes. I'm, I am the type of person that uh, when I hear a, a Bible verse or hear someone reference something, I'll jot a note down or write it down, and I may not read it at that time, but I come back to it. And what I'm getting at is if you... If you don't make, if you don't have time tonight or tomorrow to read this chapter, I encourage you to read it in the near future. Uh, it's a song that uh, David um, uh, David had wrote, and it's uh, we've preached out of this chapter before. Uh, but this song talks about 
uh, how the Lord had delivered David from the hand of all his enemies. And we know tonight by uh, the stories, they're not stories, they're real events, but we know tonight about these events in David's life uh, that David, uh, David he incur, incurred a lot of things. He, he faced things that, uh, that I'll never face. Uh, he's been through things that I'll never go through, don't want to go through. Uh, there's many things in his life that, uh, that we look at and, and you see how God delivered him in a great and mighty way. Uh, in my studies, uh, in studying about this uh, few verses we'll read in this book, I had wrote down in my notes, uh, you know, everybody uh, today, uh, it, it's amazing within the last few years, um, you know, people, people already trying to de decide uh, who's a good president, who's not a good president. Uh, who is a, um, a good uh, uh, politician or mayor or governor or whatever, they always try to decide and figure out why, what makes them so good. Uh, you'd have to agree with me tonight that David was a great king uh, for the children of Israel. Uh, but what made David a great king, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the battles that he won in fights and wars. It wasn't his ability to... Uh, uh, lead. I mean, it all it all falls in place. But what I'm getting at is, he was a great leader. He was a great commander. He was a great king. Uh, I believe what made him a, a great king of Israel was uh, he loved the Lord and he trusted in God. I believe that's what made him a great king. Uh, David, when we look at, we're going to look at a few instances in his life here this morning or tonight, and. Uh, and just share with you some things and thoughts that the Lord's led on our heart and some scripture. So I'll stop rambling. Let's turn to 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 33 and 34. And this is what he says. God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer tonight, thanking you, Lord, for uh, this service. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come and to stand and, and to preach the message and the Word of God, Lord, that you've laid up on our heart tonight. Lord, as we pray, Lord, we know that uh, as this uh, Word goes out, this message, Lord, that, that uh, I know that it can help someone that is struggling I know that it can help someone in a, certain, in a situation that they may be in in their life. I know, Lord, tonight that this message can be an encouragement to all of those that are saved and following you. Lord, just, just, just allowing me to study and preparing uh, for this message, Lord, it has uh, given me an encouragement, Lord, and help in my life. Lord, as we pray, we pray tonight that, that God, that, that as we, uh, this message goes out, Lord, we we, we may have an idea of what homes or, or what people may watch this service, Lord, but we don't really know. Only you know that, Lord, and you know the needs of each and every one that are watching and will watch. Lord, as we pray tonight, we want to give thanks for all the blessings that you've done. Give thanks, Lord, tonight for uh, sending your Son to die on a cross for our sins. Thank you, Lord, tonight for always being there. Thank you, Lord, tonight for always uh, giving us strength, being the rock that we need in our life. Thank you, Lord, for all the deliverances, Lord, that you've delivered us through. And Lord, we'll, we'll never forget to praise you uh, for everything that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as you uh, take time this weekend or this week and uh, as you read this chapter, uh, I guess if, if David... Uh, titled his song, and I don't know that he did. I know uh, many people uh, would title it a certain way. I, I've read where some people believe that uh, there, there's uh, some of the one of the Psalms in the book of Psalms in this chapter are, are greatly related or even tied together. Uh, but when I, I, I kind of wrote a title down for myself, uh, you know, in this, uh, David uh, praising God. 
So when you, when you read this chapter, you can see all through this chapter, it's a song of praise of, of, of how God has delivered him and that how Lord, the Lord has always been there with him and how much he relies on him. So uh, it's amazing in the first uh, few verses of this chapter as well. I want to read them tonight. It said, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song, in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. Uh, then, and he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the, the God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and uh, the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my Savior, uh, thou savest me. Uh, from violence. So, uh, when you read just those three verses, it, it tells a, it tells you a lot about all the things that have uh, been up into this point of David's life. Now, it, it, ain't it amazing that? Uh, we said earlier that there are many things that we have never seen. There's things that we've not been through that David has been through. And I'll be honest with you, I, there's things that he's seen, things that he's experienced. I, don't, I hope and pray that I never experienced them, but I know this. Uh, if God can uh, help him and God can deliver him in those trials, in those situations, in those things that happened in his, his life, he can surely uh, deliver me. Now, not only can he deliver me, but he can also deliver you. Now, think about this for just a moment. I was thinking about the, that life of David. And, and you know how that uh, there are many, uh, many instances in the, in the Scriptures that talks about uh, David and what he's done. Uh, turn back with me, if you will, to 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17. And this is very, very familiar Scripture uh, to us uh, tonight. But it, it, it showed me something that I had failed to see before. Now, when you think about David and you think about him being the king and you think about how that when he stood before the Philistine now ain't it amazing that that when David stood before Goliath when he stood before that Philistine that David had full confidence and and David had full faith that God was going to deliver him now I can say to you tonight that he might not have known how God was going to do it but yet he knew God was going to do it. Ain't it amazing that I, I've known in my life there have been times and situations that that I had faced uh, or where there's something that I had prayed about and, and I wanted to know how God was going to do it uh, and I had an ex expectation of how God was going to do it. But you know, that doesn't do any good because, and what I mean by that is God's going to do it His way. He's not going to do it the way that I expect. It. You know, uh, there were times that in, in God delivering things that, uh, you know what, I, I, I nailed it on the head. I, I, you know what, God done it the way I expected. Uh, but there's also been ways and been times uh, of how God's delivered uh, and it wasn't how I expected it. But you know what, I'm all right with it because God done it His way. And as long as He's doing it His way, it is all right and it is good and it is perfect. So remember this. Here's little old David. Now the Bible says, now notice in verse 32, now this is very key into the, into the life of David. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Now, ain't it amazing that uh, everyone else, um, uh, you could say, preacher, uh, were they having heart trouble? Yes, they was. Uh, uh, they were having fear in their life uh, for simply the size of this giant. Just for the simply the size of what they were facing. And you know what? Uh, we may not face somebody that's 9 or 10 or 12 foot tall, uh, but yet there's many things in our life that, uh, that when we come in in, in front of him or those things face us in hand uh, we get in great fear and, and you know 
show, uh, note it in David's, David's reassuring uh, Saul and all of those, uh, uh, don't let your heart fail. Uh, uh, don't look on his size, uh, uh, but think about the Lord. Now, you've got to remember, this, this, this is a, a part of David's life where uh, if you try to, put a, try to put an age on him, uh, you would have to give him an age in his uh, being a teenager. Or, uh, whether, uh, you know what, I, I often range him from being at the range of 14 to 17 years old. Uh, I, I may be off a few years, I don't know. Uh, that's just how I see David in this, in this light. Uh, and yet, at, at just a young age, uh, uh, David had a lot of faith and a lot of trust in God. Now, uh, this this is where uh, when I was reading uh, uh 2 Samuel chapter 22 uh, this is where I, my heart began to stir and I began to think about uh, why David had so much trust in God uh, and, and think about this for a moment now here's just a young uh, teenage boy uh, uh, you know what I picture David not uh, being very strong I, I picture him not being very uh, I guess bulky in muscle uh, and even the Bible uh, describes him as being this uh, and and he said, notice he said, David in verse 28, and it says, and again, uh, anger against David. And he said, why comest thou hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride. I know thy naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Now, uh, think about this. Um, uh, here's David being uh, who he is. And yet he's the only one that has the courage uh, and, and to stand up against this giant uh, and you know when you when you think about his life just being a young shepherd boy uh, he told Saul he said this in verse 34 and David said unto Saul uh, thy servant uh, kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock and he said I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth um, and when he rose against me now picture this I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him now I want to stop for just a minute and I want you to think about this most of us uh, that attend this church, most of you that are listening tonight, uh, you know what? There's been just a few dogs in your life that's absolutely scared the life out of you. And you say, preacher, no, I'm not scared of no dog. Uh, you know what? There's been some I've ran from. Uh, there's been some dogs I walk away from, okay? I, and I was thinking about this. Uh, uh, you know, here's David, and here uh, there's a bear at one instance, a lion at another instance, and and he's got Mr. Lion by the beard now. Think about this. Got him by the beard and he slew him. He killed him. He put that bear and that lion to death. Uh, and you know what? You say, preacher, oh, that's not too bad. I'd pick him off with a shotgun or I'd pick him off with a rifle. Uh, uh, those things wasn't invented back then. The only thing David might have had might have been a sword. He might have been, he might have had a knife, a stick or whatever. It doesn't matter tonight. Uh, God delivered delivered him. Now, I was thinking about this. Uh, a long time ago, my uh, brother-in-law had went out of town, and he had this dog, and he said, could you, if you don't mind, would you go by every night and feed this dog? Uh, and I said, sure, I'll do it. I, I, I knew the dog a little bit, just going over and spending time at the house. And you know what? It, it was a, I won't tell you what kind of dog it was, but uh, you know what? When, when he, he wasn't home, uh, that dog acted like a different different person and what I'm getting at is the first time that I fed that dog uh, when I got out of my truck you know what I knew that he was going to bite me I knew that as close as I got uh, I wasn't going to get any closer so this is what I done now, after the first night I, I you know what I got the can of dog food and I opened it and I dumped it in his bowl uh, the rest of the time the rest of the week this is what I done I pulled in I rolled the window down opened the can chunk it out the window you say preacher why is that I was afraid of that dog now you say preacher that dog was only that high you got that right but yet 
he had a mouth full of teeth. Uh, but think about this. Uh, uh, there's bears that get this big. Uh, uh, there's lions that's got big old fangs and big old claws. Uh, and David was not afraid of those things uh, because he knew that God was going to deliver him out of those circumstances. Now, you say, preacher, uh, God would deliver you out of his hands. Well, let me put it to you this way. Uh, don't tempt God, all right? Uh, uh, hey, just It's best not to tempt him, and I'm surely not going to start now. Uh, but saying this, uh, I thought about David's young age. Uh, I thought about how come David knew so much about trusting and having faith in God. Uh, I think this. Uh, you say, preacher, you got it all wrong. Uh, uh, these are just my thoughts. Uh, I believe that David uh, was taught about God. Uh, I believe David uh, heard how that God delivered the children of Israel over and over and over again. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I, and I think about it this way. Uh, uh, David being uh, uh, one of those children of Israel, uh, he knew this. Uh, if God can deliver them, uh, surely He can deliver me. Uh, I love... Uh, testimonial services in our church uh, I love when uh, somebody gets up um, and they talk about how something that they were going through in their life um, and how that God had delivered them um, how that God had helped them in troubles and trials um, how that God um, uh, helped them through a situation um, now I know this um, uh, there's some things that people uh, want to keep quiet um, and that's okay um, if God lays it on your heart to share it you share it um, if he don't, you don't. Um, but listen, um, uh, when you when you uh, uh, proclaim how that God has delivered you uh, through this life and that, it has help for someone else. Um, and that's what David is saying in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 22. Um, he's saying that in those circumstances um, where everybody else might have quit um, or might have run off um, or might have hid, um, uh, the Lord still delivered him. Um, I'm thinking about this. Uh, uh, many people today has a fallback plan in their life. Uh, and what I'm getting at is this. Uh, and it's okay to have plans. Uh, and it's okay to uh, think about the future. Uh, but many people today uh, they have this type of say, let's just say plan A. Uh, and if plan A doesn't work uh, uh, we'll go with plan B. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, uh, listen, but you know what? God does not have plan A or plan B. He has His will, all right? And that's the way it works. So many people have a fall of back thing that they could fall on. Um, i just give you a few examples in this. Um, at an early age in his life, um, uh, uh, he knew this. Um, he had the Lord uh, uh, that he could depend on. Um, and through those young years of his life in that, it taught him many things. Uh, as long as he depended on God, as long as he put his faith and trust in God, God, uh, God was there um, and God helped him um, uh, listen there uh, he these are a few things that he didn't have to do um, you say preacher if you got in uh, trouble today or you had a need who would you turn to first and most importantly I would turn to the Lord. Um, now, I don't always do that. Um, uh, most times, I try to work it out on my own. Um, uh, most times, I try to work it out um, with somebody that I know can help. Um, and it doesn't work that way sometimes. Uh, uh, sometimes it does. Uh, sometimes it don't. Um, but listen, always turn to the Lord um, uh, for that help. Um, uh, David did not have to run um, and find uh, uh, the, the president of the land and say, I need your help. Um, uh, David didn't have to run um, and turn to the army um, and say, I need your help. Um, uh, David didn't have to turn um, uh, to the police and say, you know what? I've got a problem. I need your help. Um, uh, David turned to the Lord God and God helped him. Um, uh, notice this. Um, in verse 3, um, uh, David said this out of chapter 22. He said, the, the, the God of my rock. Um, now think about this. Uh, 
a rock in the Bible is always uh, looked at and described as a foundation. It's always looked at and described as a symbol of strength. And what David's trying to say in this beautiful song of praise, it is the Lord that he depended on. It was the Lord that he turned to when everything got shaken, whenever the house got unsteady. It was the foundation that kept her standing. It was the foundation that kept it going. Notice this. I thought about this. When David, he faced these things in his life. When Saul was trying to kill him, you know what David done? He relied on God. When there was unsafe times in the battles, in the times of David, he relied on God. When there was tragedy that came in his life, he depended on God. When he lost a family by death, you know what? He depended on God. And I wrote this last one down. Sometimes you can suffer loss. And you know what? It doesn't have to mean family. It doesn't have to mean death. It doesn't have to mean money. But times we suffer loss. And David always depended upon the Lord. And I wrote this down. And don't forget it. He knew his security was in God. Now think about this. Most people today in corporations and companies and even the company that I work in now, they have security plans uh, in the event of certain things that may happen. And, and, and I'm not, listen, I am not knocking it. I'm not turning it down. It's a good thing to have because of what it does, what that security plan does, it brings hope to those that are inside. It gives them, it teaches them a way to escape from the dangers uh, that may face them and it will help them to survive. Um, think about this. Um, uh, God is our security plan. You know what? He's always there um, when we face dangers. Um, he's always there um, to guide us through, uh, to lead us to safety. Uh, uh, that's what he's saying here. In verse 33, uh, he says, He maketh my way perfect. Uh, and what, the, what that is interpreted as, He is guiding me in this life. Uh, think about this tonight. Uh, if I'm going to follow somebody, I want to follow the real God. Uh, I want to follow somebody that knows. Uh, I want to follow somebody that's been there. Uh, and you say, Preacher, uh, do you have to rely on people at certain times? Yes. Uh, but no, I know this. Uh, I'm trusting and relying on God. You know what? I have no idea what this future holds. You say, preacher, do you have plans? Yeah, I've, I've got plans that I, that I have in my mind that I'd like to see done or things I'd like to accomplish or things I'd like to see. But you know what? It's still in God's hands. You say, preacher, what if those plans don't work out your way? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to stick with the Lord because you know what? But if you stick with him, you can't go wrong. But you know, most times in my life, I try, I try Alan's plan B. I try Alan's plan C. And I try Alan's plan D. And sometimes I'm running out of letters. I get down to Alan's plan Z. And then I'm like, you know what? Lord, I'm just going to trust you. And I'm just going to let you take care of it. And you know what? It's in your hands anyway. And you know what? It seems that when I let the Lord take care of care of it it's always taken care of now it may not be on my timeline but it's assuredly on his time so I want you to remember this of all the things that David faced and I mean he faced things from an early age in his life all the way to his death you know what I believe this. I believe there were many things in the life of David that he faced that may not be recorded in God's Word. We have no idea what they are. But I know this. I know the Lord was consistent throughout his entire life. You know, say, Preacher, what did David do that made him a great king? It's because he knew who God was, he had a relationship with God, and he trusted Him, and he had faith. You know what? Say, preacher, uh, what? How do I steer a person 
in the right direction. First of all, the best thing that you can do is just point them to Jesus. The best thing that a person can do, live your life like it's a song of praise. You know what? Could you imagine that in a person's life and they're going through a lot of great and many things and you say, you know what? Turn, turn to Second Samuel and read chapter 22 and notice what David said about God. And you know what? What a great testimony that is. Um, and think about this, that no matter what we face, no matter how big the giant is, I'd rather have God behind me and with me than anything I know. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer tonight. Thanking you, Lord, for the many blessings and thanking you, Lord, for the answered prayers. Lord, if, if we could all sing a song of praise tonight, I believe that song would first start out like this. Lord, we are so thankful that you sent your Son to die on a cross for our sins. Lord, that you had enough grace and you had enough mercy, God, that you would save an old wretched sinner just like me. Lord, as, as we pray tonight, Lord, we know that there are many, Lord, in this church and in this community that are so thankful, God, for the deliverances that you've given them. Lord, I've heard testimonies upon testimonies just in the few short years that I've been here at this church of how that you've helped and how that you've delivered and how that you've helped people uh, conquer great obstacles in their life and, and to come through great and many trials and they're still going for you. Lord, that's encouragement to me. Lord, I pray tonight that, that this church, it just has a song of praise, God, for what you've done. God, that this church would just always continue to sing that song of praise, not only for what you've done, but what you're going to do. Lord, we get excited about what you've done for us in the past. And Lord, I know I'm the world's worst. And Lord, I get excited when I think about the things that you've done for me. But Lord, help me get excited about the things you're going to do. Lord, there's, new, there's always things coming up. And there's always, there's always uh, opportunities. And there are always things, God, that you can help with and do. And, and God, as, as a church, Lord, help us to always see that, Lord, that you're always going forward and working in our lives. Lord, you're doing things for us that we have no idea that you're doing. And we're so thankful for those. Lord, we just pray that you help us this week and keep everybody safe and be with us as we meet again this Sunday morning to preach uh, the message that you've laid upon our hearts. We pray, God, that each and every one that is watching or may watch, Lord, that as, as, as they uh, turn their computer off or shut their phone down, God, that they can do it all in a, in a, with a clean conscience. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. So don't forget, uh, tonight, if you, if you don't read it tonight, try to read it this weekend, Second Samuel chapter 22. Good night and God bless.